Hi, Alan Stratton from Aswood Turns. For this week's video, let's take an ugly piece of wood and turn it into this beautiful box elder pearl bowl. It was a bit of a challenge, but it was worth it. This wood is box elder pearl from a club wood exchange. An expert in the club said it was poorly cut for a burl. It is the top portion of the block and very trapezoidal. I will see what I can get out of it. It is big and heavy and difficult to mount to the lathe. I have nipped off the corners, but deliberately trying not to cut a circle because I want to keep the ability to adjust the wood. Too tight of corner cuts would hamper my ability to find a great position. I cut only enough to mount the wood. The wood surface is flat enough to be pressed against a closed chuck with live center pressure. With my large bowl gouge, I will start nibbling at the corners. As the grain is exposed, I can evaluate the wood and shift it if necessary. It wasn't. The wood is so irregular that I start at the bottom first, this time. I want to see the burl grain evolve as it is exposed. With the bottom somewhat roughed, I can progress to the corners and start working them down. Now it is roughly round, but with a lot of voids. At least I can start to see what will emerge. The shape is not there yet. I continue to work with my bowl gouge, working the shape little by little. I do not have a fixed shape in mind. The shape is evolving with the wood. Finally, cut a tenon. It seems like I am cutting the tenon very late, but earlier I had no idea what and where the bowl would be in the block of wood. Then reverse the mount into a chuck. I did not finish the exterior yet for two reasons. First, the mount was not secure with only live center pressure. Second, there is always some axis shift when remounting. As I get started, I see a couple of large nasty cracks in what will be the top wall of the bowl. I have to remove them, at least this time. This is a downer. My bowl will be much smaller after removing them. I do not need to refine the shape more at this point since I will be remounting it again when the wood is dry. I can move on to hollowing. There is a lot of wood at the top to get rid of. I would rather have had it from inside the bowl. I am leaving the live center in place for as long as possible. With it in place, I can be more aggressive in my cuts to remove wood. With it gone, I have to be more gentle. After checking for consistent thickness, I can coat it with greenwood sealer and put it in a paper sack. It will stay in the sack for two to three weeks then continue drying outside.
The wood has stopped drying at 725 grams, having lost only 107. With only 13% weight loss, the burl was not fresh cut. It had to be drying some before I turned it. This may have been the source of the nasty crack. Turning more quickly after harvesting might have saved it. The burl has not warped dramatically, probably due to the burl figure. It does have a typical hump at the end grain. So now I have pressed the wood against a closed chuck with live center pressure again. The difference this time is that the closed chuck is mostly inside the concave bowl. The original life center mark has survived. I try hard to keep that mark or reproduce it while still green and still mounted to the lathe. After drying, it is the best center indicator available. The objective is to recut the tenon, then to do some shaping to remove the sealer. With the bowl now securely mounted to the recut tenon, I can continue refining the exterior profile with shear cuts. Tool handle low and cutting edge nearly vertical. Push cuts would remove too much wood and leave more ridges. Then refine the rim before moving on to the bowl interior. I start each cut now with the flute nearly closed to avoid skating. After engaging the wood, I can open the flute by rotating the handle and go for it. The bowl has not distorted very much, therefore I can take a cut with the gouge point staying in the wood. The amount of wood varies with the irregular wall thickness, but at least I am not cutting air. With the wall now round again, I can take smaller, gentler strokes. I am focusing more on the upper wall, then shift focus to the bottom. My transition is a bit scary. I hope I have not cut too deeply. I sharpened my heavy bowl scraper and go for refining the bottom and the transition to the wall. The scraper does a great job on the bottom, but a horrible job on the side walls. I have to pull out my gouge again to remove the heavy tear out. While I have the sharp bowl scraper at hand, I take a couple of refining strokes on the exterior to remove a couple of remaining ridges, then sand thoroughly. I have mounted the bowl in large coal jaws for removing the tenon and forming the foot. I have enough wood in that short area just below the main bowl for the foot. It seems to be the right diameter for this bowl, but just a little bit tall. With the speed restriction for the coal jaws, this cutting has to be very gentle and takes longer than it seems that it should. First get rid of the tenon and the old live center nub, then reduce the foot and give it a slight hollow. Then sand the foot area blending into the previously sanded wood.
Then give the fresh bowl a bath in walnut oil. The burl figure is really popping now. I had considered dyeing it for an accent, but now I am glad I left it natural. It is wildly beautiful. The original wood was very irregular, but which is probably why it came to the wood exchange. However, it is well worth the effort to find the bowl inside. Had the wood been fresher, I think I could have made it larger, but that is the way wood turns out. It has taken time to dry, but well worth the wait. It is beautiful. Please give this video a thumbs up, subscribe on my website, and tell your friends. I appreciate your comments and questions. Every week I make a new wood turning video and add it to my website. As usual, I appeal for you to wear your full face shield anytime the lathe is running. I'll see you next week with a another wood turning video.